All right, so thank you guys for joining me for the second session. It's just an hour long. I'm Tracy Wiley from GPB, as I mentioned, and this is gonna be five approaches for building connections, engaging students in distance learning. So of course, we're gonna be more in the classroom, more in person in the future, but it's always good to keep these skills and these abilities in mind, especially if you're working for a virtual academy or if you have some kids who might still be hybrid learning. So these are some things to keep in mind that work in the classroom too, but just especially important in distance learning. And GPB, we've been doing, doing virtual learning um, pretty much all, always because all of our content is virtual. So we will go into a school and we'll present virtually on the screen. Um, so it was pretty easy for us just to move to a virtual environment, but um, it's that balance of, I think that we've all had challenge, challenges with. So we wanted to share with you basically our tools that kind of support this idea that I got from Edutopia. I get a lot of great ideas from them. They're such a, a wonderful newsletter for educators. And this one talks about human-centered strategies um, and just how we can make connections in this remote learning environment. So I took this article, which I've embedded in the presentation, I kind of tweaked it for us specifically here in Georgia and um, connecting to GPB free content. So you can use the content to support these five approaches. So the five approaches, um, again, just for connecting and engaging in science learning specifically are coordinating with families. And these are all common sense things, but just um, again, it helps, I think it always helps to, to review kind of uh, the main points we want to focus on. We're trying to go back into the classroom and, and, you know, meet those challenges again. So coordinating with families, keeping things simple, relying on routines, adapting hands-on labs and focusing on formative assessments. So those are the five aspects that we're going to be concentrating on today. And for each one, I'm going to share with you tools, strategies, and content that will help you as you address each of those approaches, things from GPB that can support you. So first of all, co coordinating with families. And again, a lot of this is common sense, which is good to talk through. And please do jump in if you have anything to add or clarify, or you wanna take the conversation down a different path. We have a small group, so I am not emotionally attached to anything in this presentation. We can do what you know is most useful to you guys. So please throw in chats, speak up, um, and let's uh, adapt it as we go. So coordinate with families. Of course, we have to consider the devices and the platforms we're using, how students access instructional materials. Some students may have great Wi-Fi, they may have their own laptop, some may have to borrow their mother's or father's or sister's phone, some may have to go to the public library um, or find an area where there's public Wi-Fi, um, some may not be able to do any of that. So of course, you know, we have this um, spectrum of, of children and different challenges. And so how can we make it as uh, accessible for as many of our kids as possible? And I know we've been thinking about this a lot, but we have to continue, of course, thinking and readapting every year with new kids coming in. So we want to make sure that you're aware, it looks like it cut off a little bit, but GPB provides free and open access to all of our materials. So there's never a charge. You don't have to even have an account. It's all open and available. And we support both um, our content. We sponsor our content statewide and distribute it statewide, but we also sponsor PBS, which of course is our national a distributor of public content. We also distribute that throughout Georgia. So I want to make sure you're aware of how to find all that content so that you can easily integrate it into your lesson plans. So first of all, what is PBS? I think we all grew up with PBS. We know about it. it is, it's very much a part of our childhoods and sometimes our adulthoods. But I know as a teacher myself, uh, I was in the classroom 25 plus years as a science teacher, and I forgot about PBS in the classroom, even though I was a parent and I was watching Zabumafu with my kids or, um, you know, watching Masterpiece Mystery in the evenings. I, I, it didn't make the connection about how I can use those resources in the classroom more directly than I did. And so I want to make sure that we're just, you know, we remember that PBS parents believe it is the most educational media brand for children, more so than, you know, Disney or Nickelodeon or whatever else is out there. PBS is still the top brand for education and it's free, of course. Parents rank it number one in preparing children for school, number one in developing skills kids need, number one in modeling positive behavior. It's available in 98% of Georgia households, so regardless of whether they have Wi-Fi or devices, 98% of our families 
have a TV with rabbit ears in their living room and they can watch PBS television and 80% of US households. So again, that accessibility that um, all kids ages, um, regardless of where they're from can access this content. Um, also wanted to, on our website, we have a lot of guides into this material. So wanted to make sure you're aware of them. This is on our website, gpb.org. It's called Watch and Learn. And so again, it's just a sort of an overview of what's available on television for you and your kids. As you scroll down, you see that we've got several channels, you know, um, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3. So we have the schedule and learning resources that are connected um, for little kids, pre-K through three, it's available 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then you have 12 to five for the older kids, GPB World, six through 12 grade. Uh, this is more limited, I believe um, about, I think it's 60% of households have access to GPB World in Georgia, whereas it's uh, 98 here on the first two, but still uh, many more of your kids might have access to this than to say good Wi-Fi. So it's something to keep in mind. You can click if, if they have a, you know, a, a computer, they can click here and watch what's on television right now. So I can watch Daniel Tiger. It's on at the moment. You can see here's the schedule, two o'clock Daniel Tiger. Or of course, I can just look at the schedule here and see, okay, this is what's available every day, Monday through Friday and the time period. And I know right now it's two o'clock. So Daniel Tiger is on every day this week. Um, and of course that Daniel Tiger talks about social emotional learning, but we can go, we can always watch something later, like at 1030, me and my kids can together watch Eleanor Wonders Why. That's a science show. It is in both English and Spanish. We can do Curious George. We can do Hero Elementary. So again, these are some of the science shows that are on television that we can work with, um, with our families and teachers with. Let me see, I see that there is a chat. So let me pause and see what y'all are saying. Yeah, great. So I'm glad um, something maybe new you guys weren't aware of. Let me know if, um, if, I, if it was too challenging to figure out where I got to it, but it's all these links are embedded in the, in the, um, the, the presentation. So keep that in mind. So we'll come back to the schedule in the future. Just wanted to, to let you know that where it was, but we are gonna actually revisit it. So again, it's at gpb.org and it's watch and learn called watch and learn. So I will, it's something actually that, um, that we were talking about earlier. If you were there in the keynote session at, at 9 a.m. and the Department of Education mentioned this gpb.org slash learn, it's called the Georgia Home Classroom. So this is what um, she was talking about this morning, a morning this morning. And so you can see here it is watch and learn. So this is just what, what I just showed you guys. You just click on watch and learn and see the schedules. This is where we were. So that's part of that DOE GPB partnership. So that's one thing that you can connect where you can connect with your families uh, because it is so accessible. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure you're aware of is PBS Learning Media. So that's PBS TV, what's available on a very accessible platform. PBS Learning Media is on the computer. Again, free and open and accessible if your kids and your parents have access to phone, tablets, Wi-Fi, that kind of thing. But again, it, it doesn't cost anything. And of course, the research has shown that when teachers and parents and students make that connection between PBS, whether they grew up with Sesame Street or, or they're currently watching you know, something like Cat in the Hat, and they make that connection between the what's in the classroom and the home, that it shows their performance really was affected. So across all subject areas, increased 8%, um, and that on average students who use that PBS connection in classrooms outperformed in national assessment by 10%. So significant increases just by using free and available content. So on PBS Learning Media, again, it's all open. You don't have to have an account. There are more than 30,000 learning resources. They're updated every day. There are interactives, meaning games, eBooks, uh, simulations. There are lesson plans, videos, images in multiple languages. Uh, with transcripts, with uh, text to speech. So, so many tools that are free and available that go with this content. They're all aligned to Georgia Standards of Excellence. So again, you don't have to figure that, that extra step. They're aligned to PBS television, as I mentioned. So you can watch something on television and find lesson plans that go with it here on PBS Learning Media. 
And again, anyone can have an account, whether a student sets up his or her own account because she really loves spiders and she wants to watch all the videos and all, play all the games about spiders that are available, or whether her parent you know, wants to have that connection um, and maybe supplement some of the, the lessons that you're giving by finding more content on something. And of course you can make that connection because you can set up classes and connections with your parents and students. Again, it's all free and, and accessible. So we're going to go into those a little bit more in detail, but I wanted to make sure you are aware of them. I'm going to play this very, very short video about PBS Learning Media just to give you a little a quick look at it and kind of help you feel, um, understand it a little bit better. At PBS, we know that even though kids might be out of school, their education is still a top priority. PBS Learning Media is a free platform that helps educators deliver and families access distance learning. With PBS resources that are aligned to standards and created by the country's top educators, it helps keep students engaged in learning in and out of the classroom. So wherever education takes place, PBS Learning Media is here to help. Visit pbslearningmedia.org to learn more. Very quick. Are you guys very familiar with PBS Learning Media? Is this something old or new to you? Just maybe give me a thumbs up or throw something in the chat or unmute and say yes or no. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it if it's something you guys are already experts on. So, uh, oh, there's a chat. Okay. So it looks like not quite, you've used a few, but not quite familiar. So I'm going to go a little bit into it. Um, just stop me if, it, if it's review, but I kind of wanted to go over four things. I wanted to make sure you guys knew how to sign up um, and how to tell your parents and students how they can sign up if they want, um, how to browse by keyword subject resource, how to favorite and folder things, and how to share your collections. And this is just a basic introduction. Then we'll get into those more details of the, the five approaches. But this, of course, is one of the approaches. How can you connect? with your families and your kids in a virtual learning environment. And one way is through this open and accessible resource that they don't have to do anything to, to, to get to. So here's what it looks like. Um, as I mentioned before, it's at gpb.pbslearningmedia.org. You'll see that right now I'm not signed in, but I can still watch any video, play any game. I don't have to be signed in. So that's what's so great for kids and parents. You can send them a link and say, watch this video or play this game, and they don't have to create an account. They can just watch it. So that's, uh, again, helps with that accessibility that anyone can, can, can look at it. Let's see what that chat is there. So many buttons open. Okay. Physics and chemistry videos are great. So it sounds like you're an upper, upper level instructor. Good to know. So, um, so when you do, as a teacher, I do actually um, highly recommend that people go ahead and sign up for an account. And the reason I recommend it is because as teachers, there's so many tools that we use that we can use um, that come with it. So you can see I'm not signed in here, and I can still watch things and look at things, but I can't. I can't track anything. So if I found a video I loved, I'd have to make a, a note separately about the name of it or, or the link. I can't actually track it here. So if you create a, an account, like if I just sign, sign up for an account again, <clears throat> and again, I can use that. Sorry, let me go back to PBS Learning Media. I can use that account. I can use it with um, Google. I can sign up with Google. I can sign up with Facebook or just my email address. So I saw, have signed in as myself. And now I have all these uh, resources I didn't have before. I have favorites. I have folders. I can send assignments to my kids. I can create classes. I have builder tools like lesson plan builders. So it's much more valuable for me. I have this like Swiss little Swiss army knife in the corner that helps me uh, share this content. So it's just more useful. And we do free trainings on PBS Learning Media. I can come to your location or we can just set one up um, live or you can watch one of our previously recorded videos that just give you an introduction. And they also have lots of short videos um, down here in the help section that tell you how to use this. But once you've created an account, you again, or, or your students, they can create accounts here or parents would just sign up as a teacher. 
Uh, they don't really care whether you're a teacher, it's just whether you have adult or kid privileges, essentially. The teachers have lesson plans and things like that that they don't wanna um, muck up the waters for the students. But of course, um, it's great for any, even a student. If I click on student, then I can have my own account here. And I can also search for content and favorite things. And I can get my assignments from my teachers. And they're actually rebuilding this to make it look less kid-like. Kid so for older kids, because it's something we've been telling them for years that you, know, you have content for pre-K through college, but a college kid or a high school kid is not gonna wanna create an account that's got Sesame Street and the Wildcrats. So they're actually redesigning this so it's more appropriate for older kids as well. So that should be coming out in the fall. So anyway, here we are in PBS Learning Media. We've signed up. Um, if you haven't done it now, just maybe do that in the future. And then now, how do we look around? So obviously, we can search for keywords here in the search box. We can search by subject. So I can click on subject here. There's all the, the core four, plus, of course, you know the, the arts and the enrichments, our health and PE. And underneath are going to be these subtopics. So under science, we've got earth science and life science and physical science. You can click on any of those and it'll take you into all the collections of um, the different kinds of science and even more subtopics and you can browse that way of course you can also search for things like you know volcanoes and you can search for that and it'll pull up all these results and on the left here you can filter by grade whatever grade you want by subject you can click on science you can click on type like maybe you're looking for a video you can click on language maybe you want a, a video that's in both english and spanish so we have three pages of upper, upper science videos um, in both English and Spanish, for instance. And I can either go down here and keep, I can, I'd say I just want videos I can download. I only want videos that come with support material so I don't have to create my own. So I can start narrowing down what I want and then I can watch them and figure out what works for me. So that's another way to search, of course, by subject, by keyword, you can search by standard as well, Georgia Standards of Excellence. Again, you have to have an account to do that. You don't have to have an account to search by subject or keyword, but to search by standard, you do, because they have to know that you're from Georgia. So you create a Georgia account. I can also search for nothing. So if I go home here by clicking the home button, PBS Learning Media and start all over and just hit the magnifying glass and search for nothing, I can also filter that way. So I can say, okay, I'm just looking for um, maybe physical science for high school or physics for high school. So I can click nine through 12. I've got 19,000 results. I can click science for my subject, physical science. I can um, look for maybe forces in motion. And so it's starting to narrow it down. I've got 326 there. Then I can decide, I wonder if there are any like simulations. So maybe I need an interactive. So it looks like I've got one or a few. So I've got a bunch of, here's some simulations on for physics for high school kids. I've got skydiving and tennis ball cannons and rocket sleds and graphs. And so all of these are interactive simulations that we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more in the future, but you see how fast I found them just by doing a search for nothing and just going by high school simulations for physical science, what do you got? And then I can look through these and be like, oh, that looks really cool. Or no, that's, you know, that's lame. So you can decide what would appeal to your kids. So that's just a, a very general overview about searching. I would also recommend when you search, um, again, make sure you clear your filter. So I've, I've just searched for a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go back home and clear everything. If you're searching for like complex um, sort of topics, let me think of something that's uh, more than one word. So like plate tectonics. So I could type plate and tectonics separately. And you'll see, I get a lot of results, but you know, the first one is about plates. It's about dinnerware. So that doesn't, that doesn't help me at all. Some of them are gonna be fine. Um, like there's a few that are about plate tectonics, but this one's about, you know, singing plates, um, which is about vibrating plates. So again, it's not plate tectonics. So I'd recommend for something like that, you put quotes on either side of it, plate tectonics, and then search that way. Did I spell it wrong? And then, sorry, that's why I weren't coming up. But anyway, um, plate tectonics, and you see I only get things that I want only about um, volcanoes and plate tectonics. So very, very specific. So that's another little trick to keep in mind. So any questions about that, signing up, searching? So when I find something I like, 
So say, let's look at this lesson plan on plate tectonics. And you guys are welcome to throw topics out there that you want me to use as an example to help, you know, save some of the work. Um, so feel free to do that. And I'm happy to, to use those as I'm searching. But in the meantime, here's this um, plate tectonics lesson plan for grades six through eight. You can see that it's got an overview, objectives, um, all these embedded resources, interactives and videos and um, materials you'll need for an actual um, very, very simple material. So kids can probably do this at home, cornstarch and baking pans, 10 candles, that might be a little bit hard. But a lot of these lesson plans are very, very simple and expensive um, materials to keep in mind too. So say I love this lesson plan, I wanna try this with my kids the next day, I can favorite it. So I just click on this heart and now I've added it to my favorites. So I can find it later. I can find it the next day or next year. If I go up to my dashboard here and click on my favorites, then I'll see it at the top because my favorites are, um, they are organized by, by the date, the time that I added them. So because it's the most recent favorite I added, it's gonna be at the top. It's taking a minute to load because I have more than 600 favorites. So yours will probably be faster. But so you can see it's right here at the top and it's not in any folder. You can see the folders are below when they're in a folder. So if I want to add it to a folder, I can just click on it and I can click add to a folder. And I can find a folder I already have maybe. See, I've got some science. I could add it to that one. I've got physics. So I can look and see if anything works. And if I don't find anything I like, I can also create a new folder here and I can call it, you know, plate tectonics and save that. And so now it's in a new folder called plate tectonics. So that's how you can find content that's valuable to you, identify it, and then you know, curate it for future use. Now, a really cool thing about this is once I've created all these folders here, I can share them with anyone. So say, you know, I really want to share this uh, folder on surface area. So I've got this folder on surface area. So I've got right now it just has one, but say I have three or four things in it and I want to share it with my students or with my teacher or my parents. All I have to do is copy this link here and just copy it. And then I can email or embed that link in an email or some message to my kids or my parents. And then they have access to my folder. So I can put whatever I want into this folder and I can share the whole folder with them. So that's something if, if you have a flipped classroom or you just have a bunch of things you want your kids to do at their own time and they can choose the order. It's another way to send all this free content to them. And again, they don't need an account. They just open it up via your folder. So I think we've covered everything that signing up, looking around, how to search, how to favorite something, add to a folder, and then how to share your collections via your folders. So that's just a very quick overview of PBS. Anything you guys have to question or ask me before we move into actually using it in those approaches? Okay. Well, I did wanna highlight a few things, a few collections that I really like from different grades, just so you know, I mean, there, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of collections, so it's hard to pick just a few, but if there are any elementary teachers out there, I love Hero Elementary for K through two. It really goes into science and engineering practices. So it's about how to investigate, how to be a scientist, that scientific thinking. And you see here, you know, that right, they're talking about properties of materials, um, solids and gases, um, how animals, you know, life cycles, um, movement, pushing and pull, pulling forces, parts of a plant. So there's all kinds of explorations across the sciences. And it really just, uh, again, um, talks about their superhero abilities, which are scientific abilities. So it's a great fun. They probably watch this on TV anyway. It's a good way to connect what they're enjoying in the television to the classroom, to what they're learning in class. For older kids, I really like do-it-yourself science time with Mr. C. I don't know if you're aware of him. A very fun, engaging teacher. He uses a lot of music, dance, rap, um, and he's just very silly, and I find him very appealing. So here he is doing, again, in his kitchen, very simple experiments, magnetism, kitchen science, a thermal energy polymers, 
Um, and so you watch some of his videos. There's a little bit of animation, but um, it just is to make it more engaging. It's for older elementary and- What time is it? It's science time. It's science time. Let's all open just the line. One, two, three, four, here we go. Learn so much your brain explodes. So again, it's just, it, it's why we became science educators, right? Science is a blast. So he has a lot of fun with it. And of course, there's all these activity guides that come with it. So you don't have to reinvent everything. It tells you how to do these experiments, you know, in your own classroom or virtually like he's doing in these videos. So again, when I was a science teacher, I spent a lot of time on Google looking for free content uh, because I didn't have a budget. And so I was always trying to find things that I could uh, do inexpensively with my kids. Um, and so this is just an example of, um, you know, another source, a source you can go without having to spend hours and hours on Google, you know, go here to PBS and find appropriate, free, um, trusted content. So that's for uh, middle kids. And then for older kids, I really like It's Okay to Be Smart. I don't know if you're aware of this, but it's a PBS digital studio series. Again, a lot of pop culture references really appealing for older kids lots of, of fun of you know just laughter he's really silly um, uses social media in a lot of his things so and they're really interesting topics you know like venom and the super bowl or the superb owl why don't animals wear glasses but again he taught he gets into actual science just from real life science or quirky science um, perspective so i definitely recommend that for older kids 9 through 12. okay so I don't know if anyone had, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I did add this little uh, collaborative board in here because I wanted to give you guys a few minutes. Why don't we, it's 634, why don't we just say three minutes or so to look through PBS Learning Media and see if you found something that you'd like to share. So I just shared Hero Elementary and DIY Science and It's Okay to Be Smart. And if there's anything that you would like to share with us that you found on PBS Learning Media, maybe just take a few minutes and type here. I see that we're all together in this, so you can just type right here what you found um, or share links to folders you've created. And I'll type some other stuff that I really like here as well. Take a few minutes and see if you find anything you'd like to, to let us know about. And let me know if you have any questions, of course. All right, great, thank you. Okay, guys, well, let's move on. Oh yeah, physics girl, she's really funny. I was just watching her yesterday, actually, because I was thinking of um, that experiment with milk and food coloring. Again, just another simple experiment that um, is so profound when, in terms of what it teaches. And she does a really funny video on that one, on um, milk and food coloring. I don't know if you guys have ever done that one before, but uh, very, very simple, milk, food coloring, and soap and a Q-tip and a bowl. So something that um, hopefully kids could do at home. All right, so moving along, um, the second one, uh, I think that says three, but it should say two, keep it simple. So we had, you know, building those connections, of course. Second is keeping it simple. So focusing on activities and prompts that are more towards noticing and wondering rather than making sure everything is completed correctly. And again, with distance learning, I think we just, there's, there's, certain restrictions that we have and so what where are our priorities and so one just focus on uh, less intimidating activities for engagement 
And also, if you do have an activity, rather than make it stressful for the parents, use it like a mini design challenge. So find activities at home that don't require a lot of purchasing power or you know complicated setup, but allow the, the kids to to find their own uh, solve their own problems in terms of how they can do this. And of course, assess them on you know their creativity and their ability to to um, meet your requests in a, in in their own way. So ways that we can help with that um, are some of the teaching strategies that we use. And again, you may be familiar with some of these, but these are some of my favorite simple teaching strategies. See, think, me, we. It's like see, think, wonder, but again, it's where you share some content with a, a student. You ask them to share what they're seeing or express what they're seeing and what they're thinking, then also about how it connects to them personally and how it connects to the, the greater community. So that's another way to make those connections and engage them in real world science. So thinking beyond you know, this, uh, this concept, how does it affect me personally? How does it affect my family, my neighborhood, my friends? Elevator speech, this is where the idea is, how would you explain a concept to a person if you're stuck in an elevator with them just for a few, you know, few floors. So very, very short speech, like, you know, one minute, maybe two minutes, or probably not even two, one minute, just how long it takes for the elevator to go from the bottom floor, you know, to the eighth floor or something. Uh, so how, so asking kids to create these very brief elevator speeches are simple, but it allows them to, to showcase their knowledge. Looking 10 times two, this is great for um, graphics where you're, or, or, um, where you're trying to, to understand what uh, your student has learned from whether it is an infographic or a series of charts or data. So the idea is you give them a complicated, a more complicated than usual image, it can even be a photograph, and you give them a, a certain period of time, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, where all they're doing is looking at this image. Like I said, it could be an image of anything, a photograph, a painting, an infographic, a graph, um, just anything that, that you feel conveys the, the uh, idea that you're trying to convey. They look at it and then they take a certain amount of time to write down 10 things that they saw in that image. So it can be 10 vocabulary words or 10 uh, questions or 10 um, you know, pre-knowledge connections that they have um just 10 observations so anything that they see in that first glimpse then you bring them back to the image and have them look again for a certain period of time that you decide on 30 minutes 30 seconds to a minute or so and then have them do it again another 10 phrases or sentences or words so this is really uh, it's simple but it really uh, requires them to go deep into this graphic or this image um, it could even be a video if it's like a, just a maybe a video with no narration they can watch a, a one minute video we have plenty of those on pbs that don't have any narration it's just an image like uh, the water cycle there's one of the water cycle that just goes over and over again watching the water cycle there's one of like spiders building webs so you can really give them any kind of imagery and for the second time they have to find 10 more things so they really have to think and research and ponder critical thinking what 10 more things can they get out of this piece of material and of course they practice these strategies over and over again they get better at them they get better at that deep dive observation skills and research skills they be get better at expressing their knowledge through the elevator speech they get better at making connections to the science they're learning and themselves and their community Muddiest point, this one is where you start the conversation with what is hard. So you don't, you just say, okay, everyone has to come up with what they think is the hardest, most challenging, the muddiest point of this lesson. So it again makes not knowing okay, so that they can ask questions, they can admit they don't understand something because that's what everybody's doing. We're not gonna talk about anything except what is the muddy point? What part is, is, is slowing you down? Like you're getting stuck in the mud. And so that becomes a very common part of the conversation and it's, not, it's okay to talk about that. So again, practice, practice with these simple strategies, makes connections, um, make them part of the routine, all part of those approaches. Five thinking hats, uh, you guys may know about this one. It's where, you analyze a, um, a con content from a specific hat. 
So you may be wearing the fact hat, which means that you and your group would only be analyzing the facts from the video. You just make a list of what you learn fact wise. Another group may have a feeling hat. So maybe that group would express you know, their feelings about this concept. Another group may have um, what is what's challenging about the concept, like the muddiest point. Another group may be um, you know, how to make real world connections. So it's, it's a way to break down the content among various groups, and then they come back together and share what they've learned. So collaboration in terms of the five C's, they've got to do critical thinking with their hat, collaboration when they come back together and communication of course as they're sharing what they've learned and they change hats so maybe one week they're the the fact hat next week they're the feeling hat and so the hats will move around so again simple strategies to do over and over again um, as they build these skills and then this these are a bunch of strategies that just have these wonderful acronyms aeiou the strategy is again you watch a video or reading passage and you analyze it by a what adjective describes it E, what emotion are you feeling after interacting with this? I, what was interesting to you? O, what was like an OMG moment? What really you know, jumped out at you as horrible or wonderful? And um, what question do you have? So you always have a question. And it's so everyone's always going to want to know more or express what they don't understand. PMI is something that's, this is really good with career explorations. Um, of course, we're always talking about, you know, how we might use science in future careers. So if you're exploring a career as a, maybe we, in the last session, we did one on um, a logger because we were talking about forestry. So a, a tree harvester. So what would be positive about that? Maybe being outside all the time. What would be a minus, a negative about that? Maybe because it's dangerous working with big trees and, and heavy equipment. I, what's something interesting about that? Interesting that it's so profitable because forestry is such a huge industry in Georgia. So it's another way to break down thinking in a very simple way. And then east, west, north, south, this is called compass points. East, west, north, south. Again, you're about to go into an experiment, a lab. What's something exciting about it? What's something worrisome? You know, what are you worried about that, you know, the acid will burn your skin or you don't have enough materials or you're colorblind, you know, whatever it worries you about it. What's N is need to know. What else do you need to know before you start this experiment but to feel confident? And S, what is a suggestion going forward, you know, for next time to make the experiment better? So again, great, simple teaching strategies uh, to keep in mind for uh, making those connections and also routine, establishing this routine. So we're gonna actually practice one of them. We're gonna practice compass points. So as I mentioned, um, the exciting, worrisome, need to know and suggestion going forward. And we're gonna do this with um, a video. And this video is from Science U. And so this is a great series, again, for elementary through high school, really. It's younger kids, like elementary to middle. But I, I like to use uh, material for younger kids with my older kids just because it, it takes off some of the pressure of some of the heavy thinking in science. So again, you can use this as well. So we're going to watch this short video. It's less than three minutes. And I want you to be thinking about um, this experiment. It is an experiment um, you may have done before with your kids. I did it with mine called the egg drop experiment. And so we're going to watch it. And I want you to be thinking about what you or your kids may be excited about, what is worrisome to you, um, what do you need to know to move forward in your suggestion. And again, it's also an example of what type of content is available on PBS. When NASA sent the Mars Exploration Rover to Mars, they faced a huge challenge. How could they safely land the vehicle without breaking it? So what do you think we can do to safely land on the surface of Mars? We challenged the campers to design and build their own Mars landers. But instead of landing a rover, they had to land an egg without breaking it. So the challenge has been thrown down. Good luck, I'll be coming around to check. So if you had to drop a raw egg, how would you protect it? Armed with bubble wrap, foam, balloons, and newspaper, they got to work. We are designing an egg protection system. Oh. Top and bottom? Yeah. I think so, so I think oh, We're making parachutes. But would they work? Would the landers dissipate enough energy from a fall to protect the egg? It was time for the moment of truth. So 
Some designs worked, yes. and some not so much. This is why cars have airbags. <laughs> then we showed the campers how NASA did it. First, a parachute opened to slow down the lander. And then, as it approached the surface, such a cool design. We had to make one just like it. The campers got a pattern from NASA for a pyramid-shaped egg lander capsule printed on construction paper. They cut it out, folded along the lines, attached four balloons through poked holes, and taped them down. Put a raw egg in the paper capsule and taped it closed. Our Mars egg landers were ready for launch. We took our landers back to the parking garage, this time to the very top. So just a, a cool example about how you can take common materials from around the house, because you saw those kids were using shoe boxes and balloons and foam and whatever they found around the house um, to build their original designs. And then, of course, the second design was really just a piece of paper, which you can get in PBS Learning Media, um, where this comes from, and cut it out and four balloons. So a very simple and expensive material that you can even mail to your kids, honestly, you can mail four balloons to them and they can just cut out the, the, the uh, PDF that you send. And so then they have these great opportunities to do this. I did this with my uh, third, fourth, fifth graders just as an engineering design process. So it's great for younger kids, but I like the connection to NASA as well, because then you can take it with older kids and talk about you know, real careers in, in um, you know, aerospace and, and some of the design challenges that adults do, which is basically the same thing these kids are doing. So keep in mind, you know, these great uh, resources that really work across the, the grade levels. So for those of you who are in the Nearpod, here is a Padlet. If you have a chance to go in and write what ex is exciting about an experiment like this that you could do with your kids, what would be worrisome, um, what you would need to know, and a suggestion moving forward. And you can do this with your kids too. Like we're going to do an experiment, dropping eggs. What are you excited about? What worries you? What do you need to know? What suggestions do you have? While you're filling that out, I'm going to show you where I found, um, you know, the, the cutout for this one. So the collection is called Science U. So I just type Science U. And here it is. It has 20 different experiments. And so you scroll down here. How do you drop an egg without breaking it? So that's a video we just watched. And you'll see the support materials are right here. Student handouts. If you click on the student handout right here. you'll see that here is the model from NASA. And so all they have to do is cut this out and it has all the steps for doing it. So it's all there for you. And I, I wish I had found this when I taught uh, this, this activity in, in school because I totally would have used this. I did not have access to this NASA um, cutout. So we didn't go this extra step, which would have been fun. All right, so interesting, um, the models, yeah. So testing the models, yeah, of course. Um, that's the fun part, right? Um, being the kids, being the ones to drop it from the top. Um, so can I get an idea how this works? Students building structures, yeah. And I love it, as I mentioned, it's something that they can use all kinds of things with. There, I, I wanna show you this other um, example. I'm gonna move forward. So sorry, yeah, the problem with Nearpod is I'm gonna pull you with me, but I wanna show you this other thing I found. So this is also in PBS, it's called Design Squad Global, and it's a way for you to do activities with uh, students in other countries. So you can sign up for Design Squad Global and then your kids can do the experiment and they have pen pals in another country doing the same experiment and they can exchange results. So it just shows again, how science is an international language. So here's um, a class that did the egg drop experiment, and you can see here was their you know original design. So they they drew all these these different uh, designs here, and you can um, kind of see you know what they came up with. So these were the most popular designs. So it's just a, again a way you can watch watch movies about it, design, build, play games. So it's another uh, free resource that you can use um, as you're doing some of these science ex explorations. 
All right, I'm going to move a little quickly because uh, we're running out of time. So relying on routines is number three. Um, and it's very similar, you know, we're, we're building upon all of them. So making those connections, keeping it simple, relying on routines, they all are, are part of the same approach. Um, you want to make sure that children feel safe. So you want to set those expectations, so they feel safe. Routines also help you with building relationships um, and making kids, you know, understand what's going to happen, even in this really unsecure situations. Um, and then also make sure you build in time for socializing and playing. So a couple of suggestions for this. Um, there's this great activity called this or that, which you may have used before because it's just so simple. Um, but the idea is that when you check in with your kids at the beginning or middle of the day, you, you present them with two images and you ask them, you know, which of the images appeals to them, whether it's how they're feeling or what they're interested in learning more about or just which one looks the best to them. But it's just a way for you to check in and say, OK, pick one, this or that and tell me why. Why did you pick this without giving them any more information necessarily except the image? So all the images I'm going to show you that I picked for this or that come um, from PBS Learning Media. So for that, for PBS Learning Media to find them, all I did was I did a search for nothing. So I just hit the magnifying glass with nothing in it. On the left here, I hit science. And then I went down and hit images. And there are all these images. So there's volcanoes and planets and animals and graphs. And so I just picked some images from here. Uh, it says there are 276, but some are galleries. So there are multiple images in the gallery. So there's probably four, at least 400 images here. So I put them into the Nearpod. So my first this or that would be checking with my kids. So how are you doing today? Do you feel more like this caterpillar or like this moth today? Or which one appeals to you? And there's a lot going on in here, right? First of all, there's some life cycles because a caterpillar is an earlier stage, you know, of a butterfly or a moth. So there's that going on for science. There's some ecosystems going on here because you have this moth that's very camouflaged. Um, there's some adaptations because obviously both of these are adaptations. This one's camouflaged, this one's standing out to say, you know, I taste bad or I'm poisonous. Basic needs are happening here. You know, what are they eating? They eat different things. So even though at this moment, I just am asking them to pick one or the other, like, do you feel more like a caterpillar today? Are you hungry? Or are you, do you feel brightly colored? Or are you more like the moth? Like you're feeling quiet, you want to hide, or maybe you want to fly. However they interpret it doesn't matter. It just helps you get an idea of how they're feeling. And then from here, you can launch into the unit, whether it's about life cycles or basic needs or predator prey relationships or ecosystems or adaptations or whatever. It just helps you um, sort of make two connections. Another uh, combination I found here are these predators. So predator prey relationships. Do you feel more like the golden orb weaver or the pygmy chameleon? So, right, she's sitting quietly waiting for something to come into her web. He's camouflaged, but he has this very long tongue to reach out and grab his food. Little different kind of effort. You know, maybe one likes insects, one likes reptiles. Uh, maybe one likes her color or one's sunnier than the other. So just, it doesn't matter why they choose one, but you want them to express it. Why did you choose this? And if this is part of the routine, this or that, then it becomes easy for them to, um, you know, to make those connections and explain how they're feeling. And then another one I picked was just Mars versus Venus. And these are very, very similar. So again, what would make one stand out over another? Maybe it's their pre-knowledge. They know about Mars or they've read something interesting about Venus. Maybe they know that Mars is the God of war and Venus is the goddess of love. And so they've got their uh, mythology that's influencing them. So it doesn't matter again, but maybe you're gonna be talking about planets or the solar system. And so it's a good launching point to find out how they're doing, what they know, what they're feeling, and then go off into your, into your lesson. So again, it's part of the routine, build in these, these check-ins. And all of those uh, strategies I, I met, mentioned earlier, those can be part of the routine. AEIOU can be your routine. Compass points can be your routine. Um, muddiest point can be your routine. So once they are familiar with the strategy, they do it over and over again, and they can get deeper into the content because the strategy is familiar and safe, and they know how to do it. Also part of the routine, going back to that schedule. So if you have younger kids and you want to watch television together, because you know that every kid in your class has a TV, they may not all be able to do the, the online assignment, but they all can watch television together and you can talk about it. So again, you can find something here on the schedule 
and you can decide, you know, on Monday, we're all going to watch Ready Jet. Well, not that's 630. On Monday, we're all going to watch Nature Cat and do some life science at 1130. And I'll see here on this Nature Cat, I can click on it. And it'll take me to PBS Learning Media where I can find all these graphic organizers and all kinds of games and things that go with Nature Cat. So we're watching it together on TV and then I can give them some printables and some activities that go with it. Or going back to my schedule at the top here, there are discussion questions and conversation starters. So I can click on these and it'll pull up um, some questions I can ask my kids to get us talking about it. So as I scroll down here, there's one for each show. So I just have to find Nature Cat. What nature adventure did Nature Cat and his friends have today? What place did Nature Cat explore outside? What did it look like? What creatures did he find? This can be part of the routine. Every time you watch the show, you can ask the same questions so kids know what to look for. And again, that helps them with their research skills and their observation skills. So part of routine. And we are really running out of time. This is why I originally had this one as a two hour session, but um, we're gonna stop on time. So I'm just gonna let you know what is coming so you can go back and look at this. Um, number four, actually, I really wanted to get to this. So I'm sorry we didn't. Adapt hands-on labs. Um, there are so many amazing virtual labs at PBS Learning Media and simulations. So for older teachers, I wanted to make sure that you were aware of them where you can assign the labs to your kids or do the labs yourself and film, film yourself doing them. So first of all, there's this dissection 101 for the classroom, dogfish, earthworm, clam, all kinds of stuff, cow, eye, sheep. So obviously um, something we can't do in person and we may not wanna do anyway, but they can watch the dissections and learn from them. They come with support materials. This um, dogfish dissection has eight support materials. So a lot of classroom resources for you. So really great for um, upper level biology. This next one, these are sim bucket simulations. So these are more chemistry and physics. So we've got circuit building, balloon charging, density, all kinds of chemistry, atomic structure, covalent bonding. So there are five under here and there are 15 under here. So again, these are like games, they're interactive. You know, the students have control over the, the different, um, um, forces and interactions that are going on, but they can explore in a virtual lab. So these are also wonderful sim bucket. All this is embedded in this in the in the um, the slideshow I'm going to give you. These are wonderful. So again, for older kids, Nova labs are fabulous. These are from Nova, as we all know, but you go into these and they're so beautiful and in depth. So the polar lab, you literally go to the poles and explore it. Same thing with the sun lab. I'm just gonna click on the polar lab so you can see what I'm talking about, that these are not um, flash. These are not simple exercises, they're gorgeous. So I'm gonna click on Nova here and launch it. Again, we're still in PBS Learning Media. All of this is there. And so it takes you into this gorgeous, gorgeous lab with all, again, these resources to support you. And about the lab and then you're just gonna go in and play it and you can save your work. So I can sign in, I'll just do a guest pass, but the kids can sign in so it saves their work. And it does take a little bit of time to load it so that you know this would require uh, kids who do have Wi-Fi. Um, so it may be something that you have to consider, but you literally go on this amazing- You've probably heard something big is happening to our planet. So it starts with this video and she goes through the whole video. I don't think you can skip it. Um, can you? I don't think you can skip it, but she, that's the introduction. And then it actually takes you to the poles. Like you go there on a helicopter and you get there and you're at a camp and you have to look around the camp and analyze things. And so it's, it's really a fabulous, beautifully done lab. Um, and where they actually are out in the wild, quote unquote, analyzing the environment. And so they're all like that. So that's the, the polar lab. Um, but they're also, as I mentioned, there are other labs as well. So the sun, we've got the, the sun lab, where are they? Polar lab, there they are. So exoplanets, uh, sun, energy, clouds, RNA, cybersecurity, evolution. So really, really well done, would highly recommend those. And then the last thing is focus on formative um, rather than summative assessments. So the formative assessments, I wanted to make sure you were aware there are a lot of 
in um, interactive lessons in PBS Learning Media. So you can assign these lessons to your kids. You don't have to do any work. This is an example of one for younger kids, continue as guest. Um, this one is in Spanish and in English, so the kids can switch back and forth. So I'm gonna switch to Spanish here. It has text to speech. You see there are eight pages. And so each page is gonna have an activity. So they can read it in Spanish or in English, or they can have it read to them. Como te vistes durante el año. Te there are embedded um, vocabulary words. And if they are trying to learn English, they can switch back to English and say, okay, estaciones is seasons in English. And so it helps them with their English. And then these activities are embedded. So visualize it, they can go in here and then it's asking them to circle things that you're indicative of a spring or of summer or of you know winter and so they can show why they recognize those seasons so that's one example that's for younger kids older kids uh, might have a little bit more challenging like why isn't there an eclipse every month so this is another interactive lesson again has text to speech in english and spanish embedded um, videos and then each page is going to have some kind of assessment again formative assessment where they're trying to figure out um, you know, what's going on and learning about these lessons. So they're taking notes, they're watching videos, they're answering questions, they're doing interactives. Um, of course, this one, as I mentioned, is for an older kids, so you can see it's a little bit um, higher literacy level, um, harder questions that are going on here. Um, but again, they still have text to speech. And then the third one for older kids still, uh, ocean circulation in the North Atlantic. So this is more about physical science. And you can see here's the text to speech here. It looks a little bit different, but if you've been to the beach or a rocky coast, but there's more text, um, a little bit higher level again of um, literacy. But you'll see this is all completely done for you. So if, if the lesson aligns to what you're teaching, then you can go and assign it and your kids can complete each page. And then when they're done, they submit it to you. And then you can see um, their answers. And this can be done via Google Classroom or via PBS Learning Media. Um, they, they both work because they, they are best friends. They play well together. So um, you can, again, I wish I'd had these when I was a science teacher because it would have saved me so much time and effort uh, when I was making them up myself. So here's a, that visualize it again for older kids. I just want to show you what it looks like for older kids. See a little bit more challenging. The instructions here, you know, they have to circle the regions of the Atlantic where dense waters will likely sink. So they have to understand you know, sea surface density and how to find it. Um, so, but again, it's very similar. It's the same kind of tool. It's just a higher level of, of uh, interpretation. All right, guys. So hopefully, that, I know I sped through those last two, but those are the five um, areas that we really want to concentrate on, coordinating with your families, keeping things simple, relying on routines, adapting hands-on labs to a virtual environment, whether with these virtual simulations or with you know, simple uh, materials at home or recording yourself doing some of these, and then focusing on formative rather than summative assessments just to make sure they're getting it throughout the process, um, spending more time on the learning process than necessarily um, the outcome just um, as, as you're building through some of these challenges. So sorry, I went over a little bit. Um, please do, if you have any questions or comments, reach out to me. And I will be sharing this slideshow um, with Southwest Georgia Risa if you didn't have a chance to get your own copy and also the recording. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and um, head off to the next one, guys. Thanks again for coming.